Recently I acquired this Tech 503 oscilloscope and its service manual and I thought it would be worth taking a quick look at it. I'm not sure if I want to do a full video on this oscilloscope yet, so this is just going to be a brief rundown about it. This is a Tektronix Type 503 oscilloscope from 1960. It is a true differential oscilloscope, which makes it quite useful. Now one thing that is uh, unfortunate about this, if I go ahead and let it power up here, and there's the trace. Uh, while I can get it to respond in XY mode, the sweep generator does not seem to be functioning. Now, that dot that keeps disappearing, so that should be moving across the screen. As I adjust the sweep time, it's changing how long it would take for it to scan across, but it's stopped in one position. I can move it up and down the vertical axis, which should be voltage, but even that doesn't respond when I apply a voltage to the input. I've got it shut off here, and we'll go ahead and poke around the inside. It's really easy to get into, it's just two screws on each side, and then it pops right open. And the first thing you'll notice is that this unit uses tubes. Now I don't have a tube checker, so I'm not going to be able to validate those without some serious effort but it may come to that. There are some things on this side that are worth taking a note of. One is this big transformer over here, which I'll mention again when we get around to the other side. And the other is this note here. Here's what that note says. It is desirable that only silver bearing solder be used on the ceramic terminals and for tinning the iron. Ordinary tin lead solder may be used, but repeated use will break the solder to ceramic bond. See your instruction manual. Now what that's referring to is very apparent on the other side. Let's take a look at that. Now unlike the Sobox calculator from my previous video of early 70s construction, you will see that there are no circuit boards in this oscilloscope. All the components are held in place with these rails made of ceramic that are centered with silver solder on them. If I tried to use my regular lead solder, the centered silver would lift off of the ceramic. So, in order to even begin repairing this, I need to make sure I have silver solder on hand. This is the other side of that large transformer I showed you. This is a Tektronix specific power supply that they made that was supposed to reduce the weight of the unit. Because that really makes a big difference when something is this large anyone really cares how much it weighs. Now, one of the downsides of that is you really can't get replacements for that transformer, and it is known to have failures. From what I've read online, the CRT usually ends up being the problem with the transformer, but mine is working perfectly fine. I'm suspecting that some of the low voltages in mine have failed. Looking around online, other people who've got these oscilloscopes have found that old repairs put a new transformer alongside the existing one to make up for that. Mine does not have an additional transformer in it and appears to be unmodified. Now I haven't started troubleshooting this device yet. For all I know, it could just have some dirty potentiometers in here that are affecting how the sweep works, but I don't think that's likely it. And that's why I got the manual after the fact. I plan on reading through that to know what I'm doing and getting some silver solder so I can work on this stuff without damaging it. Well, that covers most stuff I could say about the oscilloscope right now. I still have some research to do on it, and hopefully I can get it repaired. If it looks like I am going to be able to, I'll be sure to film a full video about it, because I know that will be interesting. But for now, I'll see you later. not a dirty R61. It's not a dirty R322. It's not a dirty 339. That's interesting. As the trace blinks, so does this neon lamp in the background. The tubes all seem to light up. Well, back to the manual.